Are you ready? A Shot of Wrestling, Episode 173. And wait, we go. Wait, you get shot, boy. Is that the message you got? We are about to go live, but you're ready to rock. So take a shot. Oh, so take a shot. Oh, yeah. I'm a street breaker. I'm a heartbreaker. This is my dawn. I'm a more breaker. Rick Flair, they took more about to seek and destroy. It's an SOW. Let me hear you make noise. Take a shot, boy. Is that the message you got? We are about to go live, but you're ready to rock, so take a shot. Hello everybody and welcome to episode 173 of A Shot of Wrestling. I am your host at Michael J. Putty. And I was excited about this week. So we'll have a special guest in studio, someone we haven't heard from in a very long time. But unfortunately, I had to cancel last minute, so it's just your boy this week. Mark Schwann is somewhere gallivanting around in Europe. Last week's guest host, Mark Schwann's best friend, Carson Niehoff. It's his birthday. He's out there celebrating his birthday. So happy birthday, Carson. Hope both of guys are having a great time, but we're here this week. Let's start the show with this week's wrestling replay. SummerSlam. So hot, it's scary. August 29th, 1994. From the United Center in Chicago, Illinois, which just opened 11 days prior to this event. So I'm assuming it still had that new arena smell to it. In front of a crowd of approximately 23,000. Bam Bam Bigelow and Erwin R. Scheister defeated the Head Shrinkers via DQ in 7 minutes 20 seconds. Alder Blaze defeated Bull Nakano to retain the Women's Championship in 8 minutes 10 seconds. Razor Ramon with Walter Payton defeated Diesel with Shawn Michaels to win the Intercontinental Championship in 15 minutes 3 seconds. Tatanka defeated Lex Luger in 6 minutes 2 seconds. Jeff Jarrett defeated Mabel in 5 minutes 45 seconds. Man, ain't he great. Bret Hart defeated Owen Hart by escaping the cage in a steel cage match for the WWF World Heavyweight Championship in 32 minutes, 22 seconds. And in your main event, The Undertaker with Paul Bearer defeated The Undertaker with Ted DiBiase in 8 minutes, 57 seconds. I remember watching this match, Undertaker versus Undertaker, but I don't remember why. So I looked it up, went back to the archives and found out that after losing that casket match to Yokozuna at Royal Rumble in 1994, the one that scarred me for life, man, I was scared shitless for months months on end after that uh, still crisped me out a little bit well the undertaker did not appear for tv for a long time he lost a casket match it can't be on tv he was out for like several months well wf then foreshadowed his return by airing these vignette packages of people claiming to have seen the undertaker well eventually my man ted dibiase you know who introduced the undertaker originally back in survivor series 1990 claimed that he's going to bring back the undertaker to the wf but paul bearer informed him that DBS's Undertaker was an imposter and that Paul Bearer had located the true Undertaker, leading to this match at SummerSlam. Well, in the build-up to this match, in the build-up to this match, Leslie Nielsen, from Naked Gun fame, great movies, performed short segments trying to solve the mystery of how can there be two Undertakers? And he appeared throughout the broadcast. And I remember him being intertwined throughout this show, so I'll, I'll be keeping an eye out for Leslie Nielsen and his co-star, George Kennedy, to reveal the mystery of two Undertakers. There's a man and Jerry the King Lawler were on commentary. This man was fresh off his federal trial where he was acquitted just one month prior. That's SummerSlam 1994 in a nutshell. Seems like a fun show. Big names. You got my man Teddy Biasi, the, the, uh, the Million Dollar Corporation, was it? What was it called? Oh, man, what was it called? Anyway, Bam Bam Bigelow and Erwin are trying to start making their way to the ring right now. I like the bartender's not here this week. I kind of found a new drink. I have to go to the liquor store and buy this bottle of apple-flavored whiskey called Serpent Spite. Well, the liquor store by me no longer carries it. There's another liquor store by me who still has it, but it's dwindling down. Apparently, they don't make it anymore. What I liked about it wasn't, I mean, it was good, nice and smooth. It tasted delicious, but the bottle's only like 17 bucks. Fantastic. Okay? So now i got to think of something else. Okay, you know, I'll love you some Jack Daniels. I'll love me some Jack Daniels honey, but it costs like almost over $30 for the bottle. I can't, I, can't, I can't live like that. Way too much. Way too much. Well, you know, Fireball, big bottle's only like 20 bucks. I like to buy that and do shots of it. I don't think I can drink Fireball. I just think I get sick of it eventually. The money's tight. So let me suck it up. Let me buy a bottle of Fireball. Fireball with 7-Up. You know, not too bad. Nice and refreshing. Nice and crisp. Great summer drink. <sighs> not bad at all. Highly recommend it. I had drinkers coming down to the ring. Accompanied by the overrated Captain Lou Albano. I had a crappy week this week. Wasn't feeling that great all week. It was a slow, 
crappy week. Happy it's over. And it ended on a high note for your boy at Michael J. Putty. One, I have all these memes saved on my phone, but I don't feel like posting them to my social media normally. So I never really took the time to do it. So now I figured out how to post them on my stories. So make sure you're following me on social media. I'll definitely post more memes. Looking forward to that. Something to do while I'm bored shitless at work. But I went to the store. I pull into the crowded parking lot. And there's two spots right next to each other that, that are open. But some assholes walking. So I had to make a wide turn. So now I'm not parked in a spot. I'm kind of parked in between both spots. Well, the lady to my left, old elderly lady, has her door ajar. And she keeps looking at me. I'm like, all right. Is she coming out of the car? Is she backing up? She keeps closing and opening her door. What's she, what she doing? You moving? You leaving? What, what's up? So after this game of cat and mouse, I decided to back up, pull over to the spot farther to the left, and uh, go about my business. Well, I get up, out of my car, lock the car, start walking. She goes, oh, excuse me. Excuse me, sir. Well, wouldn't you know, her car alarm is going off nonstop. She goes, can you help me? I'm like, with the car alarm? She goes, yeah, it's been going off. I can't figure it out. I can't stop it. I'm like, really? All right. I don't know that much about cars, okay? I'm not a car guy. Only started driving like three years ago. But alarms seem pretty easy. So she pushes the seat back, gets out of the car, wants me to sit in her car. I'm like, all right, I could just like run off with her car if I wanted to. It's a crappy car. Mine's better, so it's fine. So I don't know what to do. Car alarm's going off nonstop. And the key's stuck. The key's not turning. I go, oh, great. This is how I die. Eventually, finally get the key out of the ignition, get out of the car, close the car door, lock it. Car alarm stops. I unlock the car, open the car door for her, tell her to try it. She gets in. Car turns on, no problem. Car alarm is silent. Easy peasy, beautiful cover girl. So I wanted to go about my business, but she's like, I'm fucking Batman saving her from the Joker. She was like on cloud nine, so elated that I helped her from her misery. So it makes me feel good about myself. A little pat on the back via Barry Horowitz. So moral of the story is, you know, stop, help people out, pay it forward. Because I was pulling into the parking lot, I saw like three people walk past her, just staring at her. Your boy Adam J. Party now a hero, so cheers to me. That was my week in a nutshell. Told you not much happened. So the fact that I'm counting down. It was four weeks till my vacation from work. Alas, now it's three weeks till my vacation from work. Can't wait. Counting on the days. 15 work days. 21 days in general. I just need to break. I need to control, alt, delete, reset, relax, and just unwind for two weeks. Do nothing. So looking forward to that. Three weeks. Here we go. What does the future of the show hold during my sabbatical? We'll find out in the next coming weeks. But let me worry about that while you guys focus on going over to our YouTube page, a shot of wrestling, checking out Green Man's series of interviews. This week, he sits down with Brian Idol, most recently seen on Evolve, 10th anniversary show on the WWE Network. This guy's a rising star in the scene. We've seen him pretty much everywhere. Here in the Northeast Tri-State area, all the way down south to Florida. This man has traveled over to Japan. This guy's going all over the place. guy's conquering the world. Sit down with Green Man. Go over to our YouTube. A hey, shot of wrestling. Check out the full uncut interview with Brian Idol. So here's just a little trailer to what your appetite. Well, the biggest biggest break I ever had in acting was being in that movie, The Wrestler. Wow. And uh, you know, I also learned the hard way about Hollywood as you know the dude promised me ten grand and never gave it to me. Think about this, dude. How many ECW reunion shows? Not one of them has ever brought Paul Heyman back mm-hmm. to the ECW arena. You know what I mean? Like, not one wrestler, not one guy. Nobody got to give this this emotional speech and then bring Paul Heyman out. And it was like, it all came down to me in the ring coughing. And then all of a sudden, Paul Heyman appears. So, like, I'm the guy. Right, there's a certain core group of people, for whatever reason, that just really hate me. And it's so funny to me because, like, all of those people love so many of the other things that I played such a hand in bringing to them. I was probably a troublemaker. <laughs> I, was probably, I was probably crazy. And I could have called literally anybody. Like, I'm sure I could have, you know what I'm saying? You can't name a wrestler. Pick your favorite wrestler in the, in the tri-state area. Even signed ones. I could have been like, hey, man. I want to come wrestle in front of, you know, 17,000 at the Barclays Center tonight. I, I don't think anybody would have said no. But uh, I picked uh, I picked Gabe. I mean, Japan was awesome. And the thing is, you know, I've said this before, but, like, I went there with only a few bookings 
and I didn't plan on staying long. It was kind of like a situation where I was, all right, I have an opportunity to check this out and, and see what it's all about. And it was like the complete opposite. Like I went there and as soon as I wrestled one match, literally any show in town was like begging me to be on it. Wow. And, like they were so like so pumped about having me there. My biggest break at modeling was being on the cover of a, mag uh, a romance novel where I'm half turning into a, uh, I've turned into a cat, man. I don't know. <laughs> it's wild. Like I said, man, nothing in life is a, is a guarantee, and so I'm going to weigh my options as per what's best for me. It's time for In the News with Michael J. Putty. As the head shrinkers, Bam Bam Bigelow and Irwin are trying to fight back up the ramp to the backstage area. Referee's trying to break things up, trying to regain some order. You see uh, Mike Kyoto rocking the uh, mullet. Very popular in the 90s. Made famous by Billy Ray Cyrus, Shawn Michaels, and my brother. My brother was rocking the mullet. Anyway, let's get into some news. I guess the biggest thing that happened this week was the Raw reunion. Kind of the word going around is that the Raw reunion special was evidently a ton of headaches. A lot of brawls putting it together. It was noted that the W had to rewrite more than one segment because the talents were, that were involved were flagged by the W Medical, keeping them from doing anything physical. Such as, we know, Ricochet, he was supposed to be involved with the click segment. He had an elbow infection. Rikishi, he didn't pass the W Medical exam. The plan was for him to do the stink face to Devon Dudley. That would have been cool to see. And Pat Patterson lost the 24-7 championship off-camera to Gerald Briscoe because Patterson wasn't able to lie flat to take the pin. You know, that one's a duh, I guess, right? But speaking of Pat Patterson, at 78, Pat Patterson is now officially the oldest superstar to win a championship in the WWE. Before him, the oldest was, give me time to think about it, the fabulous Moolah, who won the WWE Women's Championship in 1999 at the age of 76. Patterson beating her out by two years. But also kind of uh, making waves during the Raw reunion was Alicia Fox being lumped with these legends and icons and Hall of Famers. Apparently the WWE started advertising her as one of the returning stars last week, although she is still listed under the active roster for Raw. But as of this recording, so are the Bell Twins and Rhino, so take that with a grain of salt. There's no word yet if she has officially quietly retired. I think she hasn't wrestled in a while. I think since April. I don't know if she was hurt or what happened. I'm trying to look into that and see uh, if we be updated. Someone who wasn't at Raw Reunion. The icon herself, Trish Stratus. The GOAT. Apparently she's in talks to come back for some time to go against Charlotte Flair. That should be a good match. Looking forward to that. Trish Stratus versus Charlotte Flair. Two many people consider the greatest of all time. So definitely looking forward to that match. Creepy little girls are handing Wilda Kano and Angel Blaze a bouquet of flowers. What the hell is this about? Okay. Can we just get on with this match already? Never saw it before. Did Wilda Kano do that? Or... I don't know what's going on. There are creepy little girls, though. Now, here's the situation. I come into the studio, turn on WWE Network, look for an old pay-per-view, boom, wrestling replay. It was uh, kind of a headache today. I'm sure we all got the notification from the WWE app that there's going to be an upgrade coming. Well, this happened. And it's, everything's all changed. Everything's all looks more like Netflix now. When you go to WWE pay-per-views, it does allow you to cut to a specific pay-per-view. Like tonight, I looked for SummerSlam. They let me pick the year. Instead of going through the years and picking SummerSlams, that kind of helps. But I'm going to have to get used to this. I like the old way better. It was crisp. It was clean. Now, i got to deal with something new. Ugh, I'm not ready for this. I hate change. I had to change my fish tank today. I was a bitch. It only took me two hours to do. And my poor little fish, the heartbreak fish, Shawn Michaels, was having a heart attack. He hates change, too. I don't, I don't blame him. It took me a while to get used to this. It's supposed to be more streamlined. I don't know about that. We'll see. But speaking of the network, something we've been talking about for the last year, I think it's been. Along with this upgrade, the WWE Network will also upgrade to a new tiered system. The tiered structure is believed to include a free version, which would contain commercials and limited content while more advanced subscriptions would feature exclusive events and content from indie promotions such as Evolve. I think when we first reported this, there was three tiers. Free, I think it was $9.99, and then more advanced. I think it was $14.99 or $15.99 for the more advanced 
stuff. I think I'm still going to stick with the 999. I don't want the free. I don't want the commercials. I don't want the limited stuff. I want my monthly pay per use. It's all I really watch on this show, on this network. I'm trying to get more into the programming, original content. And I guess it really all depends on what indie promotions they have on the network. I want to upgrade to the uh, higher tier. But let us know what you plan on doing with the W Network. Do you plan on doing the free subscription, the basic subscription, or the advanced subscription? And let us know why. Inbox at ShadowWrestling.com, a Shadow Wrestling on our social medias, Shadow Wrestling No A on Twitter, or 619 3433 005. The hotline is open for voicemails or texts 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So let us know. I'm curious. Part of the upgrade is once you relaunch it, you have to re log in. I don't remember my password. I'm putting an old email address. I'm swearing this email's right. I'm swearing the password's right, but uh, it was a different email address. What's it? 20 minutes of my life. Can't get back. I guess the other big. Big news happening this week with TNT and AEW officially announced that they'll be airing a weekly TV show on Wednesdays from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern, starting Wednesday, October 2nd. The first show will air from the Capital One Arena in Washington, D.C., an arena that holds up to approximately 20,000 people. According to the latest Wrestling Observer newsletter, the promotion will be running different sized venues based on demand. They'll be looking into arenas that can hold approximately 6,000 to 11,000 people. Now, in regards to how many shows they want to put on, their goal is to run 100 to 120 live events per year, including many Saturday night house shows, and are expected to run 51 TV show days and up to four pay-per-views a year. Going back to the big four pay-per-views, so we'll see how that plays out. So it's getting closer. AW's big debut's coming up. How that change the landscape of wrestling, we'll find out. Well, everyone's excited about AEW's rumored to be Wednesday Night Dynamite. I think that was a trademark they filed. I'm still about Impact. Talked about a couple weeks ago, Impact was in talks with Access TV, AXS, to be the new home of Impact, which makes sense. AXS, Access TV holds, wow, Women of Wrestling, New Japan stuff. Makes sense. Perfect fit for the Friday night block. Well, in an update, Fight Oracle is reporting that talks between the two sides have fallen through. Access TV originally turned down Impact, but Impact owners, Anthem Media, expressed interest in buying Access TV. Well, Access was not interested in a buyout. And apparently things are very, very, quote-unquote, unstable over at Anthem. That sucks. Like I said, it was a perfect fit. Probably Impact finds a new home because nobody has Pursuit Channel. But I'll be following the story closely, so we'll keep you updated. So with all the new stories that happened this week, this one got pushed back to uh, the back pages. Jimmy Uso was arrested for DUI while driving in Pensacola, Florida this week. Apparently he reportedly refused a DUI test and was also cited for speeding. He said it would be in court Thursday, August 15th. Now, the officer saw him speeding and also swerving left and right. Apparently, when they pulled over, Jimmy had some issues holding and handling documents, like his license, registration, proof of insurance. Apparently, his eyes were very bloodshot, and the officer noticed that he was slurring his speech, pupils were dilated, and he reeked of alcohol. Now, after being told several times to get out of the car, he finally obliged. He was very unsteady on his feet. The deputy who pulled him over asked if he would want to ride over to an adjacent parking lot, which is flat, level, and well lit. Well, Jimmy agreed to take that ride. When we got into the car, he was very confused. Wasn't know what's going on. Uso asked if he needed a lawyer. Officer told him the lawyer wasn't necessary. But then things started getting erratic as Uso took his phone out of his pocket and started shoving it in the officer's face. And that's when the officer put the handcuffs on him and officially placed him under arrest. Now, while driving Uso to jail... The cop had rolled down all the windows of the car because the stench of alcohol was engulfing the vehicle. How much does this guy have to drink? Jesus. If you still drive a car, you can still sort of function. How do you reek of that much alcohol? Jesus. No word if anybody else was in the car. Now the WWE officially released a statement saying, Jonathan Fatu is responsible for his own personal actions. Something they're, I guess, getting used to saying, because Jimmy was just arrested back in February, I believe it was. For his little altercation with the police. Two times in, what, five months? It's kind of uh, not a good sign, Jimmy. Hopefully this is a wake-up call and he needs the help he needs. If any, maybe he's just going through a lot of shit. But hopefully this doesn't happen again. Better not. Watching Shawn Michaels backstage with Diesel, tag team champions, being interviewed by Todd Pettengill. I remember a long time ago I wanted to, I should say, I was thinking about maybe going at Shawn Michaels for Halloween. I mean, I had the white icy trap. I mean, just about Shawn Michaels, right? Remember, I think I got the gloves. I got that hat. That zebra striped, whatever. 
it's called. Whatever you want to call those style. I forgot the name of it offhand. I wish you know, I think my parents threw it away. Son of a bitch. I'm going to go for it to eBay again. But I digress. Finally, in all the news this week, W announced their earnings for the second quarter. It's being said, Fisk Man didn't appear thrilled with the results, calling it, it is what it is, end quote. Now, the company dropped in television ratings, network subscribers, merchandise sales, live event revenue, and attendance from the prior year's quarter. Revenues are down 5% to $268 million. Now, from the same quarter in 2018, raw ratings are down 14%. SmackDown ratings were down 11%. Consumer products declined 13%. Network subscribers were down 6%. Live event revenues were down 7%. North American live attendance was down 2%. And international attendance was down 14%. International audiences love W. This That's where they make a lot of their money from. They'd be down 14%. I'm saying a lot, man. That sucks. Well, glass half full here. Despite the declines... WE was profitable this quarter after posting a loss in the first quarter. While the E reported a net loss of eight point four million in the first quarter, they had a net income of ten point four million in quarter two. Wall Street responded favorably to the report and W stock rose eight point six percent and closed at seventy four dollars and sixty eight cents. I think it was Friday, Thursday or Friday, that number. So I guess like I said, class half full here. Now the E has another event in Saudi Arabia coming up in the fourth quarter. The T V deal with Fox is kicking in, in the fourth quarter. The E is targeting record revenue for approximately about $1 billion, and with the adjusted operating income before depreciation and amortization for at least $200 million for the year. I have no clue what the last two sentences meant. You think I would? Spent a lot of time in finance, but... And then I'm happy you don't. So congratulations to my brother and Jeff the intern for the uh, uptake in WB stock, I guess. Razor and Moen going against Diesel for the IC Championship. This should be a good match. Well, that's, that's all I got for news. I'm going to take back, relax, and watch this match, and we'll be right back with some cheers and heels. Talking about Raw Reunion. A Shot of Wrestling presents Cheers and Heal. Watching SummerSlam, you you realize that I was born in the early 80s, grew up watching wrestling my whole life. It's really the best time to be a wrestling fan. You can see Hulk Hogan, Macho Man, Ultimate Warrior, The Undertaker in their prime and heydays. Then you can see the Shawn Michaels, the Diesels, the Razor Ramones, Mr. Perfects, Lex Lugers, Owen Hart, Bret Hart. Then you had the Attitude Era, and then so on and so forth. We've seen it all, folks. We've seen it all. So you've been with me for the ride since day one. I think we've seen the best wrestling ever, man. Good time to be wrestling fans. The Royal Reunion. Big show happened. Very distracted by that hot blonde in the third row. Watched it with a good friend of mine, Erwin the Voice Escobar, and uh, he didn't see her at first, but when he saw her, it was hard to unsee her. But you see that Alabama slammer to the ring apron that Cedric Alexander took? Man, he took it right on the mouth, man. Oof. Well done. I will heal because I don't like that OC moniker. Original club. I'm not a fan of it. Uh, maybe it'll grow on me. I don't know. But I'm not a fan. Overall, it was a fun show. I mean, a lot of people were bitching about it. But what did they expect from a reunion show? That was good. Great to see a lot of people. And it's good to see it was a, it was a reunion, not a re, like a legend type thing. So you got to see people who aren't legends, who aren't Hall of Famers, like the Kelly Kellys, the Caitlins, the Santinos. I thought it was a good show. That was fun to watch. That was well done. Well, well done. People were bitching that Stone Cold didn't give any stunners to anybody. He's out of shape. He's out of his prime. What do you expect? Although someone did mention how they would like to have Kevin Owens come in and do the stunner. That's kind of a passing the torch to that. Much like Ric Flair did the Miz with the figure four leg lock. That could make sense. No real. Good job, Robert Union. I see a lot of guys and girls I've met in the last couple of years. So I'm looking forward to the uh, putty reunion. But maybe because I was watching it with a friend of mine, I didn't really pick up pen to paper too many notes for Robert Union. I thought it was a good show from top to bottom. But SmackDown, SmackDown was fantastic this week. Big cheers to David Otunga being on commentary. If you're a good fan of the show, if you're a loyal fan of the show, you know I'm a big David Otunga fan on commentary. He was getting better and better before he was drafted over to Raw and then never appeared on Raw. So I think it was good. Keep him around. Have him on SmackDown. Why does Core Graves have to do two shows? I say this every time. Why does Core Graves have to be on two shows? I'll give you some more David Otunga. Speaking of commentary, I thought New Day was killing it. Perfect role for them. I don't know why they left. Then they replaced with Michael Cole. 
two lead play by play guys. Like they couldn't find anybody else. Not even like Doc Hendricks, Michael Hayes. What about Aiden English? He's there. Getting ready for 205 Live. Michael Cole, huh? Yeah, he was right. Well, big cheers, man. That missed TV segment. That was a great segment. Came off well. Everybody involved killed it. Great segment. Great lines. But the Miz and Dolph Ziggler are not going to face each other at SummerSlam. But Dolph Ziggler is not going against Shawn Michaels at SummerSlam. What's the point of the segment? Like, where is this going? I don't understand the point of this if there's no payoff. I thought Kofi Kingston had a great promo with Randy Orton. These guys have a long history. That clip the show with Kofi Kingston, Randy Orton at Madison Square Garden. Yeah, I was there. The Green Man, during his one of his trucking escapades, was walking around where he shouldn't be walking around like Green Man does often when he's drunk. I think he saw like Randy Orton or Kofi Kingston walk by him right after that spot. Or he was right under that entrance tunnel when that spot happened. I forgot what it said. Next time, next time he's on the show, we'll ask him. But the announcer said there's only three people ever to hold more titles than Randy Orton. Like, basically, we all knew that, but it's the first time I'm really hearing it out loud. It's very impressive. Very impressive to hear it put like that. But yet, I don't hear Randy Orton's name being thrown around as one of the greatest of all time. He's behind Ric Flair, John Cena, and Triple H. And yet, he's not mentioned the greatest of all time. Where would you rank Randy Orton in the top ten? Let us know. Inbox at or dial it up. 619 343 does Randy Orton deserve more respect for his career, or does he get too much? I'm curious to see where Randy Orton ranks all time. He's got to be up there. A 13-14 championship reigns? Ah, oh, man. And a couple months ago, we had Pete Rosado on the show, and he was talking about, he mentioned something about not hearing Elias' entrance music, how Elias had good entrance music, but you never hear it because he's always in the ring playing a song from his guitar. So that's when the W2K game came out. So it's back, back in October, maybe November. And here you go, Pete. You had to hear it. Elias' entrance music. Beginning to end. It's catchy. Sounds familiar because it's my entrance music in W2K19. Well, I thought SmackDown was a great show. Much better than Raw. And Raw was, wasn't bad. SmackDown killed it this week. Fantastic show by SmackDown. You know this is the point of the show where we might play a game. There's no one to play a game with this week. I love games. I grew up watching game shows. Love me some games. It's always fun to put them together. Way back. Way, way back episode 39 which is back in November of 2016 almost three years ago I have a game lined up for Green Man but unbeknownst to me Green Man decides to turn the tables and in his own game for me so instead of being the host I was a contestant but he decided to make the game about The Miz one of my favorite guys so let's throw it back almost three years ago to see how much I know about the Miz. I have a game. I have the game. No, no. But the Green I have Man the game. has taken over I don't understand this how. show right now. It's games with the Green Man. That makes, that makes no sense. Games I mean, with the Green Man. You're the contestant. That's not our thing. I make the games. I have a game. I'm waiting for somebody to play the game with. I've been waiting for 39 episodes to pull this on you because finally you're on the hot seat and yeah. I got the game. You're gonna love this game. You're gonna love this game. It's 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 an easy game. It's it's. Yeah, it's I tell you that all the time, <laughs> and you never. It's say a it's game easy. that caters to you because you're a Miz fan, right? Um, we're yes, listening to the I, Miz music. It's yeah, the hold lead. On, hold on, shut up. Shut, shut the fuck up. <laughs> These lights, they're flowing. See, you know the words, man. I could tell you're going to ace this game. You're, you're going to go for 10 for 10. There's 10 questions. Oh, what was the tiebreaker? And there's See, this week I have a tiebreaker question. There's a tiebreaker question. Let me tell you. Because I want it to be this is, this a, is, this is pretty bullshit. a Miz fan just as much as you are a Miz fan. Like, yeah, fanatic. That's, that's why we had the Miz game like two months ago. Yeah, but I have the Miz game for you. And this week, it's Miz or Mystic. Okay. Okay? All right. So. Great, 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 great marketing, by the way. I'm going to read a statement, and you're going to determine whether it is the Miz, and it's true, and and you're going to say Miz, or if it's a mistake. If for some reason I, who I'm trying to be as great of a Miz fan, made a mistake along the way, and maybe I misquoted something, 
or there was the fact that it didn't get a hundred percent right. You want if I take a drink first? Yeah, go right ahead. Yeah, yeah. So you got if, it. You, you got a drink left? If if it <laughs> if it's true, I'll take a drink left. Give me a shot. If it's true, right, hold on. you're right, gonna say Miz. And if it's false. If there's anything false in that statement, you're gonna say mistake. You I got it. I don't miss or mistake. I don't play games. I make the games. That's right. You're gonna make this game happen. It's all about the Miz. It's all about the Miz. Just the Miz. You're gonna right. ace it. I got, I got all the confidence. All the Miz and Zack Ryder. I'm good to go. Let's do this. All the confidence in you, my friend. So you got it. It's so what's the question? If I if it's the correct statement about the Miz, I tell you correct. You say Miz. If it's correct. If it's incorrect, I say mistake. Mistake. Easy. Well done. Start off with an easy softball. It softball it right to you. The Miz is name. His name is Michael Gregory Mizanin. That's fucking the Miz. That's the Miz. Good job, buddy. You're on the board. You're yeah, on the board. How, how many questions are there? Ten? There's ten questions. Look at that. You're, so, you're one in. You know, I always wanted to play the game, but now I feel like so much pressure. I don't want to play the game anymore. <laughs> Number two. Oh. Bad man. Right. Number two. He first gained fame as a cast member of MTV's Road Rules, the Miz. which first aired in 1999 and its spin off series, Real World Road Rules Challenge. Is it a Miz or a mistake? What? Like, what am I saying? Is the Miz. Yeah, listen to the whole statement. The Miz was on the real world in 21, uh, 20, 2001. You may have had a last shot of wrestling. Listen to my statement. Yes. Is it a Miz or a mistake? He first gained fame as a cast member of MTV's Road Rules. He did. Which first aired in 1999 when its spin off series, Real World Road Rules Challenge. It's false. He, he gained fame on the real world, not the Road Rules. So it's a mistake. It is a mistake. That is correct. He gained popularity in the real world back to New York. Yes, thank you. Good job. Thank you. I only had to repeat it like three times. It was a misguided question. I mean, that's that's the point of the the game. You understand? If there's a mistake, you got to call it out. So far, you're two for two. After... Cheers to you, dude. Two good questions. No, cheers to you. Cheers to you, my friend. Number three. All right, so two for two. Miz, all right. Here we go. After a seven-year long absence from the real-world Roll Rules Challenge, Ms. Zanin returned to the reality show on April 4th, 2012, as the host of the Battle of the Sexes season finale event and reunion special. Is this a Miz or a mistake? What year? Uh, 2012. April 4th, 2012. As a host? As the host of the Battle of the Sexes season finale event, the reunion Jesus. special. Miz. It is a Miz. That is correct. I try to put a lot of information there Fresh. to kind of throw you off. Yeah. So far, so you good. Know. Yeah. Number four, The Miz was second runner-up for the fourth season of Tough Enough. That's true. That is a mistake. He was first runner-up. Oh, well, that's me That's me being an asshole for not, <laughs> not knowing the... Uh, yeah. <laughs> see, see Fury, the, the yeah. very slight, very slight, slight changes in the statement. I feel like I never understood that. There goes he, your... He's first runner-up, yeah. <laughs> that is... That is, uh, that's it. Yes. The the streak, the the ten for ten questions is over. But okay. still have a chance to win. So what's, what's, You're still what's, winning. What's that score? You are three to one. All right. Pay attention to this one, my friend. Number five. They get harder as they go along. That's how it goes. Yes. In 2008, Miz mm-hmm. was drafted from Raw to ECW where he formed a partnership with John Morrison as a team that would win both the WWE Tag Team Championship and the World Tag Team Championship. Okay. Is this a Miz or is it a mistake? Mm. 
all fucking true. But I don't know. <laughs> the timing messes up. Wow. I don't know if the fucking... I know they won one of those. Wow. I don't know it's not that easy being on the other side, it, is it? It's, uh, it's not. A lot of pressure. They won one of those. I don't think they won both of those. Oh. Just gotta say if it's a miss or a mistake. Oh, wow. It's the miss. This is a mistake. Uh, there were two mistakes, and you didn't pick them out, actually. Um, first of all, this was in 2007, not 2008, and Miz was drafted from SmackDown. Are you touching the fucking mic? And oh, yeah. Miz was drafted from SmackDown to ECW, yeah, I remember that not clearly. from Raw. Oh, ECW. I didn't make it to that one. Morrison and The Miz All right, well, did cares? win both the Tag Team Championship and the World That's Tag That's what I said. They won both. But whatever. They did win both. What's the, what's the score? It is now 3-2. to two. It's fucking being a dick at scoring. It's fine. <laughs> the, the, the devil's coming up at you. devil's got two. Question number six. It was 2-2? Two two? No, 2-3. Two to three. You're still winning. Following his hosting duties, Mizanin made his wrestling debut in September 2006 as a villain who went undefeated for three months until he was defeated by the Boogeyman, Boogeyman. True. at Armageddon. This is a Miz. This is a Miz. Four to three. Four to two. Four to two. Number seven. He has three short reigns as IC champion. One, when he beat Christian at Raw 1000 and lost it the next night on Smack on a SmackDown taping. The second one, when he beat Wade Barrett for the title at WrestleMania 29 pre-show and lost it the next night on Monday Night Raw. And the third, on the day he uh, beat... On, on the night he won the championship at Night of Championships pay-per-view and then def- by defeating Dolph Ziggler and lost it the following night at Raw. Okay. So, is this a What's miss the question? or a mistake? There's no question. You gave me a lot of You gave me a fucking lot of information here. No, but you you are the the misfits. You're the leader of the misfits. Yes. You, you okay. got this. He has three short reigns as IC Championship. One when he beat Christian at Raw 1000, and then lost it the next night at a SmackDown taping. Two. When he beat Wade Barrett at WrestleMania 29 pre-show and then lost it the next night on Monday Night Raw. And three. When he defeated Dolph Ziggler at Night of Champions and then lost it again the following night on Monday Night Raw. Is Is this a Miz or a mistake? It's a hard one. I made this one hard. I'll be honest with you. I made this one hard. Thing. He's held the IC title more than that. I think the Miz has made the IC title. No doubt about it. Yeah, first of all, no fucking doubt about it at all. By the way, Michael, you're playing for a brand spanking new Shot of Wrestling t-shirt. Well, so am I mentioned I? that earlier. Yours is a little raggedy by now. It's been a few weeks in the dryer and shit. So, I got a new one for you if you win this game. Thank you so much. Um... 50-50, bro. Oh, no, is there a mistake? Mistake. It is a mistake. Oh, shut up, yeah. He has two short reigns. One of them was against Wade Barrett at WrestleMania 29, and the other one was against uh, Dolph Ziggler at Night of Champions when he lost it the next night at Monday Night Raw. What's my score? You are now 5-2. to two. You're leading. You're leading. You're doing very well. You're doing very, very well. We got three questions left. Five to two? Five, two, three questions left. Oh, I, I guess it's a tie. That sucks. Wow. It's possible. That was, that was a hard one. He was yeah. the first superstar in history. In history. To hold the WWE Championship and the World Tag Team Championship at the same time. Ooh, this one's a tough one. Is it a Miz or a mistake? That is a great question. Wow. Wow. 
I'm becoming a Miss fan just reading these questions. Real mistake. No. No, fuck, I'm going with mistake. That is correct. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Do you know where the mistake is? No. No brownie points for you. He was the first superstar in history to hold the WWE Championship and not the World Tag Team Championship, but the WWE Tag Championship. I'll take it. Which is different, and he held it with John Cena. So either way, I win this, right? Yeah, oh. you're, you're a winner Ooh. right now. Okay, sounds good. He wrestled under the ring name Mike Mizanin, Calgary Kid, and The Miz. Is this a Miz or a mistake? That's the Miz. That is the Miz. You remember the Calgary kid? No, but I know. <laughs> you wrestled on the Mike Mizanin, but I just assume. You were confident that it was Calgary kid too? Wow. Yes, that was it, yeah, because he, he wore a fucking mask. You're going to get a lot yot yeah. confident now. Yeah. You're getting confident now. You're getting cocky now. I'm getting fucking cocky now. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> well, here's the last question. Bring that My co host to get this is one trying right. to fucking stump me on the Miz. What? Ain't gonna happen. Last question. Prior. Last, last question? What's the score? What's the score? <laughs> it is seven to two. Okay. You're not losing this anymore. Um, false. I mean, I could just fucking do whatever the fuck I want. You wanna right go now. blind? Yeah. No, I don't wanna go blind. Okay. Prior to using really and awesome. As his main catchphrase is, he used something else. That was the phrase, hoorah. It actually has some military ties because it's been used by the U.S. military, but Miz doesn't have the background in that. He just seemed to be yelling it to annoy people. Yeah. This is the Miz or a mistake. She has no military background. If that's your question, so that's, gonna, that's the Miz. I mean, he has no military background. Is that a myth or a mistake? mistake? What's the question here? What's the answer I'm giving? Hey, this is a statement. You, you, you're not understanding. I'm giving you statements. You're a horrible game show host. <laughs> is there a mistake? All right. No, and that's the Miz. That is correct. The final Good score? for you. Final score. Good for you. That is eight to two. Landslide. You want to challenge me on the Miz? The Miz, yeah. Like, did he really think he was going to stump me? Crushed it. Crushed it. That was the last time Green Man tried to surprise me with a game. You can't stump me on the Miz, man. Please. Now, I think if he asked me those same questions today, I would have gotten those two questions I got wrong right. I would have swept that category. 10 and 0. But anyway, that was fun. Always fun to go back into the vault, go down memory lane. Especially being that show that's almost three and a half years old. So much content, so much history to the show. It's always fun going back. But now looking forward to the future. Next weekend, August 3rd, live from Darrow's Extreme Fitness 2 in the Bronx, New York. Bronx Wrestling Federation BWF presents Escape from New York, an inter-promotional tournament for supremacy. Again, going down the car, we got Team BWF, captain by Brother Greatness, Tyree Taylor, and You're Awesome. Team one above all, Anthony Gangone, Jack Gallo, Jay George, and former ROH and TNA star Jimmy Rave. Last minute replacement. Team WXW, Sean Malta, Wildman Rojas, Garrison Spears, and Vinnie Mack. Team Young, Dumb and Broke, Jordan Oliver, Elias Taylor, Charlie Tiger, and Griffin McCoy. Team SWF, Monster Mac, Magic, Steve, The Body Lugo, and Jake Cage. Team BCW, or Team Satsushin Squad. Eric Jaden, Rick Recon, Dominic De Niro, and Chris Barton. Team IWA, Astro Morales, JD Alpha, Anthony Silva, and Frankie Picard. And finally, Team Russell Pro, Nikos Rikos, Chris Kuehling, Craig Steele, and Bobby Wayward. Those are your eight teams vying for supremacy. Who will escape from New York? Boss on all friends. We got Jael Cotto going against Anastasia Morningstar. BX Strong, the undefeated two-man faction will, in fact, defend their tag team titles against an unknown opponent as of this recording. TJ Marconi will put the BWF Championship on the line going against Sean Donovan and his longtime good friend, Hank Flanders, the man he sent to the hospital last month. So this should be a brutal contest. And if that wasn't enough, talked about it two weeks ago, starting my vacation on a high note, BCW presents their 25th show 
BCW 25 and counting on Friday, August 16th. Headlined by Eric Jaden going against Darius Carter for the BCW World Heavyweight Championship. And also the tournament to crown the first BCW Tag Team Champions will begin with the first round. The rep going against the East Coast Syndicate. We got a monster ball. King of the Monsters qualifying match with TJ Boss, Joe Gacy, Cut Shaw, and Meadowlands Monster. We got Billy Brash, the current King of the Monsters, going against Dan Moff. Sebastian Cage going against TJ Marconi, Gabriel Sky, Vinny Pacifico, and the ace that runs the place, Ace Andrews. Michael J. Putty guy. So next couple weeks, we got great indie action here in the Tri-State area. Make sure you check out your local indie scene for support indie wrestling. Always something going on every Saturday or Friday night. Sometimes Thursdays. So check your local listings. Superstars up tomorrow or right there. Playing these gyms. Busting their ass. Putting their dues in. And the guys you drink a beer with now, you might see an NXT in a couple months. But yeah, folks, I think that's all I got this week. The show, like again, the show, the show is from the fans to the fans. So get involved. We want to hear your opinions. Get involved in the conversation. Inbox starwrestling dot com. Dial it up six one nine three four three three zero zero five. Eric Jane will answer any love advice you have. Conversation never stops on our social medias. Hey, shout out wrestling on Facebook and Instagram. Shout out wrestling no a on Twitter. So get involved, folks. We want to hear from you. Again, a big happy birthday to Carson Niehoff, a new member of the family here at Shadow Wrestling. Mark Schwann will still be somewhere in Europe. I think the Greek Isles by next week's show. So uh, hopefully, I'm assuming I won't be alone. We'll I'll definitely have a guest next week. But who will it be? Stay tuned. About to go downstairs do some karaoke. Get another one of these Fireball 7-Up drinks. Man, it's very, very crisp, very delicious. Go check it out, man. Very good. Perfect summer drink again. I think Megan's put it in Shallow by Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper for us. Didn't know the song was still a thing. I thought the song faded out, but I've never sung it before. So I might need two of those drinks. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Maybe I'll dial it up 619-343-3005. Ask Eric Jaden what should I do about this Megan situation I'm dealing with. But it's a conversation for a different show and a different time. So for now, for Brian and I, I'll check out that full interview. That was just a teaser trailer. Check out the full interview on our YouTube, A Shot of Wrestling. An interview you don't want to miss. Definitely opens up. Learn a lot about Brian L. during that conversation, so check it out. I have been your host, at Mugger Putty. Until next week, Putty out. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I need to announce it's last Last call call at at the the bar. bar. Oh. All right, everybody, we have made it to the end of the episode, and we're still here with Brian Idol. Now, it's last call. It's the first thing that comes out of your mind, and it's the first thing you should answer. Brian, are you ready? All right, I got you. It's like a game show. And away we go. What is the worst job you've ever had? Uh, I was a cook at Friendly's for like two weeks. In your opinion, what is the best sports team ever? San Francisco 49ers. What do you consider to be your prized possession? Uh, I mean, probably go with that uh, 1979 Corvette I got in the garage. Mm. What pickup line has had the most success for you? I could literally say, hi, the sky is blue, and I'm pretty sure it's going to work for me. All right. Uh, what is the best feature on a woman? Um, her face, by far. Who is your celebrity crush? Um, Andrea Londo. If you could change anything about yourself, what would you change? I'd like to be bigger. Who is like your... 260. Like 260. You what know? are you now? Like 260 pounds. Uh, like 215. <laughs> oh, man. All right. If your career ended tomorrow, what would you like to be remembered for? All the contributions I quietly made to like independent wrestling and somehow national wrestling, like I think a lot of people don't really realize how many favors and behind the scenes things I did to bring so many of the people that they love and the companies that they love, you know, to life. And if anybody remembered me for anything, it should be for that. Absolutely. Brian, and we've gone over some of them already in this interview. So thank you so much for joining us. I'm sure we're going to see you a lot more in our area and hopefully in Florida. Maybe we should take a little road trip down there. Road trip. Yeah. Hey, baby, I hear the bell ringing, hip tosses and body slams. Oh, my. And maybe you seem a bit confused. Yeah, baby. But I got you pinned. Ha, 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 ha. 
But I don't know what to do when I see them with that golden case. They're cashing it in. Authority all in my face. What is a man to do? Good night, everybody.